On today's show, Tesla has a competitor in the solar roof business, BMW unveils its 2021 electric car, and well, it's got people talking, and I'll update you on the EV tax for Victorians, and as usual, a lot more. G'day and welcome to the show. If you're into renewables, tech like electric vehicles, battery storage, and a lot, lot more, welcome. This might be the channel for you. I cover this sort of stuff from a Australian perspective, so if you're new to the channel, subscribe. It does help the channel, it really, really does. Put a little comment down below, click the notification thing, share this on your socials, you get the idea. But if you wanna to go to the next level and you wanna get this sort of content early, including behind the scenes content, polls, news, things you just don't get here, consider supporting me over on Patreon, where from it's like as little as $2.50 per month, that's 60 cents per week, you get all this and what a lot more, including Discord privileges and what a lot more. And join these awesome individuals over here, including my producers, Tessa and the Gong, Nigel Farrier, and Ashley Hill. All right, let's get into the news. What's this? New South Wales is gonna go in it alone on vehicle emissions? Hold the phone. Okay, to my international viewers, what has just occurred with that little fake segment I did there was that in Australia, we basically don't have any emission standards, okay? So hashtag Australian politics. So what New, what New South Wales is proposing here is earth shattering, it really is. Leaked to The Guardian early last week, a draft copy of the New South Wales 2020 to 2030 clean air, clean air Strategy Paper outlines stricter regulations around noxious emissions and CO2 standards for vehicles sold within the state. If adopted, it would mean that New South Wales will match European standards, and we all know what that means. Electric vehicles, because good luck getting a car out of out in 2027 under these increasingly difficult standards. Now, whilst I welcome this move, I really do. If it happens, folks, I gotta say, it's gonna make it actually increasingly hard for car makers to bring cars to Australia because it will go something like this. Well, those crazy folks down under, they don't know they're a Martha or Bartha, and I have no idea what car to send them. That was a weird accent, apologies. It will be chaos for everyone. So how about we let our local member of parliament know that we want support around this, not at state level, but at federal level. That way, all the states and ter territories will be aligned, and that means that car makers can go, well, we basically can't sell Australians an internal combustion engine vehicle that emits carbon and yucky, noxious gas and stuff that clogs your lungs. No, we're gonna to have to give them a clean, green electric vehicle, aren't we? And that is a great thing. So, hey, New South Wales, you do it, great, well done. But you, can, can you just do your job? Question, what's better than a Tesla solar roof? An Australian solar roof with integrated hot water system. Check these massive solar hydro tiles from Tractile. They recently created and installed these systems in houses in Australia and well, other parts of the world. And importantly, have international patents plus well, the ability to actually produce and ship these in the US of A. Go Aussies! Tractile, a Queensland based company, believes that its system is superior to Tesla's because not only does their roof produce electricity from the sun, but it also uses heat to water, um, to well, heat up water through tubes, which run actually uh, beneath their photovoltaic panels. This, they say, has a twofold benefit. It cools the panels down and boosts the generation efficiency. Plus, also it helps insulate the house underneath. It's actually threefold, it might be threefold. You get the idea. I've left a link to this video below, but look, I'm really impressed with the system because, well, it's lightweight, quick to install, rated at a category five cyclone and well bushfire rating system, and is done by an Australian company. And, and the really important thing here is that you can order it now, buy it now, get it installed now, because these things are actually for real. And right, and yet you just can't get the solar, Tesla solar roofs in Australia right now. So well done. Good job. 
Do not adjust your set. I'm just making energy. So I'm guessing all of my viewers know wind turbines. Those sometimes massive things which typically reside in our countryside or sometimes in the sea, create energy from the wind. Spanish company Vortex Blakeless has created a low cost, low maintenance and well, low noise alternative. Using vortices that build up around objects, the technology harnesses the laws of physics by making these funny looking things wobble as a result of air passing around them and vortices building up behind it. Known as vortex shedding, the system uses magnets and lightweight fiberglass carbon fiber cylinders to send that like physical energy oscillating down like an elastic rod uh, around the base where an alternator converts it into electricity. Vortex Bladeless says that their system has fewer moving parts, meaning that they're about 30% cheaper to make on relative terms and require little to no maintenance and produce very little sound and are less objectionable. In terms of power output, these Vortex Wobblers are designed for local energy markets where power can be used close to the point of consumption and work in conjunction with other small scale generation technologies. So what do you think? To me, they're kind of funny looking and I wonder how they really sound when you're near to them. But nonetheless, I like the fact that they are easier on the eyes, are bird friendly and might just be accepted by this bloke. All right, time for a few bites. Last week, Brisbane-based company Tritium announced that its Tritium 50 kilowatt charger are now able to use, or have been enabled rather, plug and charge system. Available worldwide on its RT50 chargers, this system allows electric vehicle drivers to plug in, fill up and pay automatically without the need for using an app or RFID tag. Yes! I'm not completely clear on how the system actually works, but from what I understand, when you plug in, the charger talks to the car, they exchange certificates, perhaps a special ID number, like maybe your VIN number, and this is then associated already with your account, and then the charging company, whose charger you're using, charges you. Mm. All without having to get your phone out, or do a little RFID take up to the actual charger. Brilliant, love it. This last week, I've known several people have gone and tried it at the local um, charger, but so far it's not working. But nonetheless, this is a worldwide rollout and a very welcome one indeed. Coles has announced that it will soon be powered by renewable power. Nice one, Coles. In news to me, they've had an energy reduction plan in place since 2009 and to date have reduced emissions by 36.5%. And this new announcement by mid-25, the company will source all of its energy from renewable sources. Lindsay Sator, director of Greenpeace's Re-Energise campaign, knows that this switch will put a big dent in Australia's greenhouse gas emissions and will inspire confidence in towns and cities across the country that even the biggest, most complex businesses can run on renewable energy. To me, this announcement means that all three large-scale supermarkets, that's like uh, Woolies, Coles, Audi, yeah, Audi was the first, I think, good job, Audi, um, they've all committed to 100% clean electricity, meaning that goods and services in Australia for everyday use uh, will actually be brought to us by wind and sun. Hmm, it's a good feeling, isn't it? Last week, VW held its annual media conference, and boy, do they have big plans. A quick summary. By 2023, they plan on making a unified cell, which along with structural changes to PACs, will mean that battery costs are, up, are reduced by up to 50%. This will benefit customers as VW predicts that their new cells will drive down the cost of battery systems to significantly below 100 per kilowatt hour. Um, mm. Yeah, okay, that's about $120 American. So not that magic $100 per kilowatt hour yet. In this decade, they'll create six gigafactories with a total production capacity of 240 gigawatt hours. In addition, they'll collaborate with suppliers and work towards all materials from their cars to be recyclable up to 95%. For viewers from Europe, you'll be even more spoilt for charging choice as Volkswagen establishes an additional 8,000, 8,000 fast charging points throughout Europe with BP. Yeah, these guys, BP. 
Okay, so 8,000 more chargers with a charging capacity of 150 kilowatts uh, to be installed at more than 4,000 BP and ARAL. ARAL? Is that what you say, guys? ARAL? <laughs> this word? Um, at the service stations in Europe. Fantastic. What about uh, America? Electrify America, that's actually VW by the way, they're planning around 3,500 additional fast charging points in North America by the end of this year. And China, they're going to get 17,000 fast charging points by 2025 through a CAMS VW joint venture. So, VW, hello, it's Australia. Anything for us? Ah, yeah, I get your sentiment. I can understand why you just don't want us to get any electric vehicles down here because our government's not supportive of In terms of battery production, VW is going to be producing way more than what Tesla is planning on doing, but that actually makes sense. As look, VW is going all in on electric with its numerous factories, numerous factories around the world. And well, they already produce like millions of cars per year. And well, they'll be doing the same with electric. So yeah, it only makes sense that they need to really um, guarantee the supply chain with batteries. And yeah, I'm impressed VW, I really am. All right, time for another segment of charging. And well, this week, I've got a viewer contribution from one of my producers, Ashley Hill. Ashley, over to you. Hi hey everyone, I'm here at the very noisy Monash University Caulfield charger. Um, single charger, you enter in through Princess Avenue uh, and then drive straight ahead instead of turning to go up the ramp. Uh, it is paid parking with a code and app that you need to download for three and a bit dollars per hour uh, for the parking but you have a one hour maximum in the charging bays. The unit is a 50 kilowatt unit but it has um, a CCS and Chatamo adapter so you have one hour parking here and there is the app details. I think if it was broken, you could probably get away with using a PowerPoint right there, but a bit iffy. Um, what's good about this spot is that there is the Caulfield Plaza right there. Uh, so behind me now, if you head down that way, you can go out and go and do your shopping or whatever you need to do there, like a one minute walk. Um, so it does have 80% limit on the charger for the light, but it doesn't actually seem to get applied. I'm not charging above that now. Uh, but all in all, pretty good charger. It was pretty easy to download the app for paying for the parking and register, but you can, you can only be here for an hour. Awesome, well thank you very much for that Ash. And look, guys, girls, if you want to actually also uh, be part of this show and share uh, with the rest of Australia around a charger that's near you, please uh, send me a little link, my contact details below in the description. And yeah, just make sure you shoot this way, not this way, don't, don't do that, I won't put it on. And please don't, don't use music because I'll get a copyright strike. No, don't, don't use music. Um, but nonetheless, yeah, we need to uh, help each other out in Australia because we have very few charges and uh, we need to know more about what's going on where and um, yeah let's really encourage the uptake of this and a PS if you are in the market for like a Tesla Model 3 X or S um, yeah look down below for Ashley's referral link and yeah consider using his to get yourself like 1500 kilometers of free supercharging credits and yeah help each other pay it forward that's that's what it's all about pay it forward MG unveiled two EVs it plans on bringing to Europe and well, most likely Australia. First up, the MG Marvel R. This is a high-tech, large luxury SUV with three different motor configurations. Yep, three, front, rear, and a tri-motor uh, setup. They will be able to produce a zero to 100 time of 4.9 seconds. This good-looking SUV will be able to do 400 kilometers on the WLTP cycle. A strong front presence with its X pattern light and grille. The profile and rear very much looking like Audi's offerings. It features also a heat pump, a three phase 11 kilowatt onboard charger. And well, this SUV will be able to do, um, or tow rather, 700 kilograms. The interior looks very high end and features a 19.4 inch touchscreen and a 12.3 digital instrument cluster. 
Not shown, but discussed, MG says the Marvel R will have a vehicle to load socket for powering plug de plug-in devices like laptops and appliances and the like, and more details will be revealed soon. Next is the MG5 Electric, the world's first 100% electric station wagon, which would have done really well in Australia mm, 20 years ago. This practical EV is like 4.5 meters long, 600 liters of boot space, or you'll put the seats down, more than 1400. This car can also do 400 kilometers on a WLTP cycle, features the same 11 kilowatt three phase onboard charger, as well as vehicle to load. Actual details of an Australian launch aren't yet firm, but uh, there is indication that uh, MG Australia really wants it out here, and so far they're selling quite well, the brand that is, the electric side of the business, so I think we will definitely see them. And one final story, BMW revealed its upcoming BMW i4. This spiritual successor, in name only to the i3, has some sporty characteristics that Beamer fans will love. Ooh, a grill, because everyone needs to show their teeth. BMW's i4 will be fully electric and will enter European markets during the course of 2021. Coming in a few variations, the model line will be available in ranges up to 5 to 90 kilometers on the WLTP cycle. Although details are yet to be fully revealed, BMW did say that power output of up to 3 to 90 kilowatts will be available, and the BMW i4 can accelerate from 0 to 100 kilometers an hour in 4 seconds. When I get more information around this, I'll let you know, but what do you think? Is this a good looker? Um, I'm, I'm not sold on it, to be honest. Uh, the whole direction that BMW has been going lately with its very aggressive front grills just reminds me of two little beaver teeth. The, mm, it's, it's, it's doesn't, doesn't get me floated, doesn't float my boat at all. No doubt, they're gonna be nice to drive, but uh, in general, I found most EVs are pretty nice to drive. Uh, with thanks to that low center of gravity and the extra weight behind the battery means the suspension needs to be beefed up and tuned a bit better. It just means that they handle so nicely. That and no gearbox and no zzz, you know, that sort of action. It's just linear. So, oh, it, 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 if you haven't been in an EV, get in one. They're a lot of fun. They really are. Uh, anyway. I think this show has gone on long enough. I thank you very much for watching as per usual. And again, if you haven't already, consider subscribing, write me down a little comment. I really do read them. Uh, share this on your socials, get the information out there around the EV tax shenanigans. Uh, think about joining me over here on Patreon and otherwise you'd be good and you'd be great.